Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. I always like to take a look at any laser safety related devices that I can. And uh, recently a company called Great Carve reached out to me and said, hey, would you like to look at our enclosure? I've looked at a number of enclosures over the years and uh, they've all had uh, their pluses and minuses. Uh, but when they sent me the information on this, I saw this was a full acrylic, you know, safety acrylic enclosure uh, that you could see the laser from all angles but still stay protective i was very intrigued and so i uh, talked with them and they sent one over so we're going to take a look at this today so uh, this is something that is like an aftermarket mod to a number of open frame lasers out there so if this is something that interests you and you want to find more about it stay tuned we're going to jump right into it So I'm gonna briefly go over the assembly. All the acrylic parts come in a protective film and then you need to start by assembling these corner brackets. They go on with a uh, machine screw and a lock nut. So uh, you just wanna kinda get these in loosely at first. And then as you start uh, assembling all the panels, you're gonna go ahead and then lock them down once everything's in place. So just get them on all the sides and the tops. There's also this four inch or 100 millimeter flange. That's your exhaust port and uh, just Continue working your way around, uh, checking all the bolts to make sure they line up before tightening them all down. Once we have all the sides, we can start working on the top pieces. Again, there's some more brackets that you need to install along the sides and uh, same machine screw and lock nut goes on there. And then the front part has these hinges. So you need to make sure we put those in the right orientation. The ones towards the front actually go on the inside of the enclosure while the ones on the back hinge point go on the outside. So just kind of work through getting those installed. I actually used a socket wrench to help speed this up, make it a little bit easier rather than uh, trying to use the included wrench, but they do provide all the tools that you would need to assemble this. And then to finish up the build, we're gonna go ahead and install the aluminum handle on top. So the final dimensions of this enclosure, the exterior dimensions are about 27 inches wide, 27 and 5 eighths inches deep, and about 12 inches tall. So keep that in mind when planning this for your laser. So the build was not too bad. It did take a little bit to make sure everything was aligned right. So as you're assembling it, just make sure that you uh, leave a little slop, get things lined up, and then tighten them down first. If you tighten them down, you're probably going to come back and have to loosen things up. But the build quality was really nice. All the panels were protected. We had to pull the film off, and all the holes lined up well. The machining looks great. There's not a lot of uh, what I would say any mach real machining marks other than maybe a little bit on the pockets for the hinges. All the edges that are exposed here are rounded over. And so there's really not a sharp edge anywhere to be found on this once you get it all together. There are a couple of spots where, you know, you have the, the uh, hinge lines lining up where that's a little more of a direct cut. But uh, overall, they've taken some care to make sure there's uh, not really a lot of snag points or anything. I really do like that they included a four inch or a hundred millimeter port on the back here for your exhaust. It gives you a lot more options. You can always choke it down if you only have a three inch inline fan and such but uh, here in the u.s especially a lot of the uh, exhaust ports and such are going to be uh, either three or four inches so i tend to use four it allows me more flexibility to get more air moving through uh, but like i say if you need to you can definitely get an adapter to choke that down to three my only real complaint on this uh, as far as build quality uh, is the hinges on the front uh, part here so this door kind of bifolds folds back like this and so on these front hinges, the screws come out on top, the hinges are on the inside, and it, when you fold it back, those are gonna rest on the acrylic. Now, uh, I went ahead and used some silicone tubing. Uh, this is actually some fuel tubing from my RC Hobby, and just put it on the outside two screws on the back. So as this folds down, uh, it's resting on the silicone and not the screw threads uh, hitting the acrylic. The big concern here would be scratches and or divots created or, or if it hit too hard that could cause a little bit of cracking there. So uh, just having something on there to protect the top back sheet from these screws would be nice. But like I said, this is just some uh, small uh, silicone tubing 
right on the edge of just two of those screws and that's no problem. Outside of that, everything else, like I say, very nice quality. It went together very well and uh, very happy overall. So uh, let's actually start using this and uh, see how it performs. All right, so I've got just some scrap quarter inch plywood in here. Uh, I don't remember, but this stuff may be a little more smoky, which, you know, we kind of want to see how well it extracts the fumes. Um, the, I didn't mention earlier, but the design of this does have the cutouts on the front each side, which will allow for cables to pass through. And it is also kind of your air inlet. So that should allow air to kind of move in across the honeycomb into the back. Um, so you'll want to see how that works for you and your setup. You could tape off one of these if you felt need to, but just remember the more you seal it off, the more you're restricting the air. So uh, hopefully that's going to be drawing from both sides, pulling it in and uh, out that back corner. So um, we're going to go ahead and set up a test file here. Uh, we'll run it and we'll see how well it's doing for light, um, how well it's doing for sound, and making sure that it is extracting all that smoke out. So I'm going to go ahead and get that set up and we'll see how it runs. So we obviously have the noise of the fan. Um, as I close that down, it's about the same, but let's get this fired up and then we'll see if we have any noticeable noise difference here. I just want to protect my eyes a little bit here. So this is with it open a bit. I can hear the fan. It's definitely louder if I open that up, I'm trying to not look at it. And yeah, I, I would say it drops down the noise. I'm not hearing that loud module fan as much. So just another side benefit of this acrylic enclosure, it's gonna help muffle that sound some more. So uh, let's let this run. It's definitely doing a dark burn on here with the letters. We'll let it cut out and uh, we'll see how it looks after the end. All right, that uh, finished up. I didn't get any smoke smells outside here and I'm just running it through one of the smoke purifiers I have and those are actually, uh, is throttled down to three inches at the uh, input of that smoke purifier. So um, pretty impressive that uh, it did this job there. As far as blocking the light, it seems to do a pretty good job. The light was not very intense. Um, I did uh, put my regular uh, free mascot glasses on and there was maybe a little extra reduction in it, but uh, not to the point where I would worry about running without um, my glasses in just this enclosure. Obviously, if you're gonna open it up during the operation, you're gonna wanna wear your glasses during that, but I, um, I feel like it's doing a pretty good job. Uh, I'll double check and see if they have the actual optical density rating on this. I'm guessing it might not quite be the six plus that these have. Hopefully it's in that at least four range which is what you're looking for with these dialed lasers. So um, from that standpoint, it seemed to work pretty well. And there was a, a decent sound reduction. Some of these lasers have really loud fans on the modules to keep the air moving through there and uh, keep them cool. Uh, and that, that kind of whine can get very uh, uh, tiring to listen to over time, especially if you're doing a longer job. Um, this definitely does cut it down. And um, as a matter of fact, I think I might run the job again uh, and just see if with my phone I can uh, get a decibel reduction on that, so. All right, we ran that test again and uh, just using my phone, trying to hold it in the same spot. We had a baseline of about 60 decibels while it was running and then opening up that lid. It was jumping up probably averaging around 75. We had some spikes above and dips below that, but you know, a 15 decibel reduction, you know, right that close is pretty good. Obviously you're gonna have a little bit less as you get further away from it, but uh, uh, it is definitely uh, offering some sound reduction. I can definitely tell just sitting next to this thing, the fan is not nearly as uh, kind of annoying to listen to while it's running. So definitely an additional perk as well, but working well for the light, working well for the sound and uh, the uh, smoke extraction through that back vent seems to be working well. The air's moving in these side pockets and uh, extracting out that back. So uh, those three main, or literally the main two points plus the bonus of the sound, all good to help uh, 
keep your eyes safe, keep your lungs safe, and uh, well, also keep your ears safe. So as a bonus, they also sent over some of the materials they have that are laserable materials. And one of them is this kind of scratch acrylic. And so this is a thin, maybe one and a half millimeter thick piece of acrylic. It's black, kind of a, a almost flat black, a little bit of a sheen on that side. And then it's yellow and, and the yellow goes most of the way through. It's just this very thin layer of black on here. So the idea is we should be able to um, engrave away the black layer uh, revealing the yellow layer. So I'm gonna to try to do a uh, grayscale engraving and cut this out and we'll see how this turns out. So uh, I'm just kind of basing this off of, uh, I, I know I should be doing some tests on this, but I'm gonna borrow someone's numbers and see if they run first. So hopefully that works out and uh, we'll give this a shot. So let's see how it turns out. All right, so uh, actually worked out pretty well. This is the first one I ran, it's just a little cat, and it came out okay, but didn't quite get the detail I was looking for, but did show me that the settings were gonna be all right. So, so I went ahead and ran another one. This one I went out and got from a site called laserpix.com, I'll link to them down below. They have some free photos and also some paid photos. They're the ones who run the imager site for photo dithering and such. It's an online or downloadable tool. And uh, went ahead and grabbed this with their pre-processed. It was at 282 DPI, running this on the Algo Laser. Ran it at 13% max power at 11,000 millimeters a minute. And it really came out well. Uh, a lot of detail, a lot of shading, and then cutting it out at, uh, I believe 150 millimeters a minute and 95% uh, power. So. Um, just some cool stuff and you might want to check out their site. This is on Great Carve. They have this scratch acrylic. They also have some of the laserable leather and a few other items to check out, but uh, they included it with the uh, enclosure. So thought I'd run some tests on it and uh, this is some cool stuff. I might have to check out some more. So anyway, that's where I'm going to leave this review of that enclosure. I will have links to this down below in the description if you're interested in this enclosure. Uh, I believe the retail price is right around $299. Uh, I know that's a bit more than maybe some of you are expecting, but you gotta remember this laser rated acrylic is not cheap. And uh, to have one that encloses the entire laser, lets you see all around it, has all those brackets, uh, it's, uh, it's still a pretty good deal if this is what you're looking for. I do uh, like how it performed. The uh, light blocking seemed adequate and did a good job of cutting down on that uh, blue laser light from the diode. The sound was reduced by about 10 to 15 decibels and uh, it did a good job of containing the smoke and got it all into my air purifier. So the only two downfalls on it are, like I mentioned earlier in that build, the screws uh, just need a little protectant there so that they don't scratch the top. And it would be awesome if it was just a little bit bigger. Like I mentioned earlier, it does not fit some of my larger open framed diode lasers such as the longer B1 and the Acer L2, things like that. So. Um, do check to make sure that the inner dimensions are going to work for your laser before ordering this and uh, hopefully they might offer for some uh, slightly larger options in the future as well. So once again, thanks for checking this out and uh, I hope you uh, found it informational. Maybe you want to check out the enclosure or check out those uh, scratch acrylics and other materials they have over at Grave Carve. Definitely check them out. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below. I do a number of videos like this, which are project videos, review videos, and instructional videos. So if that's something you'd like to see more of, definitely hit that subscribe button as well. Anyway, I hope you have a great day and I hope you can get out into your workshop and make something too. We'll catch you next time.